Hello everybody! In this video, I will explain you how to invoke Objective-C code from Swift code. In fact, there is a bridge in between the two languages. And this bridge from Swift to Objective-C, because you're invoking Objective-C from Swift, uh, it's handled automatically by Xcode. So once you have established this bridge, you have nothing to do. From the Swift side, you program as usual. From the Objective-C side, you program as usual. And you can even have a manual memory management by, on the Objective classes only, of course, deactivating Arc. Let's see how we create this bridge between Swift and Objective-C. It's quite easy. Uh, you just need to create here a new file. So I create a new file and I see that I want to create a Cocoa Touch class. No problem. But here I say, oh, oh, no, no, I want to do it in Objective-C and I type my object. Okay, and uh, I just do next. And here I create it and it proposes me to create the bridge header. So I say yes. And each time you create in a project of a given language, Swift or Objective-C, a file of the other language, it proposes you to do that. Okay, and so here you have this header file and we will see later how to fill it. Let's just have a small example in which we will create and manipulate an Objective-C class inside a Swift project. We will init this class, we will access its contents both reading, writing in attributes or invoking methods. Let's have a very quick look on what this application is doing. It's just displaying things, okay? But as you can imagine, uh, the information uh, that is displayed on the labels is retrieved from Objective-C code. Let's have a look on the file relationships in the project. So here you have, as usual, the files from the Swift side that describe the project, the web delegate and the view controller. Here, this is the my class world, the Objective-C world with my class, and you can have as many classes as you want. And this is the bridge that has automatically been created by Xcode, as I just show you in the small demo. As you see, the source of my class is absolutely as usual. You have the dot h here, you have the dot m here. You program exactly as usual. So no comment is needed. This is the bridge part, that, the file that has been created by uh, Xcode. And here I simply import what I want to import. So here, myclass.h. This is quite interesting because this provides you a control on the visibility of what you want to be visible from Swift and what you want to hide. Let's imagine you have a large project with many Objective-C classes. You can decide that you will just have access from the Swift side to a few of those, those having access to the others. And uh, let's have a look on the view controller. So on the view controller, you do as usual, okay? I just don't provide this information because you know how to do it, okay? And it takes lots of uh, room in the slide. And the most important part in this code is here and here, where you are creating and accessing the uh, Objective-C part. So here I create my class, 
as I am used to do in Swift. Okay, and here, since I have overridden in it with an initialization, you can see that if, if you look at the Apple documentation, you see the correspondence between Objective-C and uh, Swift, and it works exactly the same. So it was in it with value, so the parameter here is value. And here I create my uh, class with my convenient in it that provides the value of the string that is hidden in the uh, class and I can automatically access to object one and perform compute. Here I'm using the default initializer. Here I access by writing in the uh, attribute and here I access by reading from this attribute. No problem, everything is under control. So, it's quite easy and it will probably be useful for a while, at least until all the Objective-C code has been ported. It will take time, maybe some libraries will remain in Objective-C, who knows? So, it's important to know how to do that. Thank you for your attention, see you later! Thank you.